It has been a length of unspecified size, I guess, since I've actually played this, because I recorded Friday's segment on Thursday or something like that, because I was a, I got a bit salty and I wanted to get over those gym fights, or the one gym fight and that other bloody idiot. So, it's been a bit of a while. I do believe I have a haul that I need to show off though, so that's why I'm positioned in front of the PC right here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I now have everything that is possible to obtain in the Ilex Forest, minus a couple of things. Uh, a couple of things which I will be going into in a bit of depth here, because this Pichu is actually quite relevant, and so is this Curlier. Uh, the reason for that is because these two are actually not in the regular wild encounter tables for the areas that I found them in, because I found this in Route 34. Uh, the reason for that is because if you remember back in the original Heart Gold and Soul Silver, uh, you got to a certain point where you had access to the national decks, and on certain days, the radio would broadcast a certain sound. On Wednesdays, you would get what's called the Hoenn sound, which if you played that in a area that has grass, would increase the likelihood of finding stuff from Hoenn, and you would only be able to encounter them with this sound, so... Uh, the same thing held true on Thursday, but that was for the Sinnoh sound, and thus for Sinnoh Pokemon. The... That concept was actually recycled into this game, but the reason, but the difference is because Hoenn and Sinnoh sound is completely useless, due to the fact that you have access to everything right from the word go, and you already have the national decks as inherent to the nature of this ROM hack, they redid the... Wednesday and Thursday sounds to be called the Meridian and Pastoral sounds. And what these sounds do is they allow you to encounter either certain Pokemon that may be rather rare or difficult to find normally. Um, and as you can see from those two encounters, the Pichu and the Curlia, you can also find evolved forms of stuff and pre-evolutions of stuff. So, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be finding are probably going is probably going to be locked behind Meridian and Pastoral Sounds. I think for areas this early in the game, though, you would probably be able to end up running into them later on in the game just because of the level curve. So, that explains what, that's, what the go is with that. Uh, that was not one of the sounds that played, by the way, because today is Monday, so... I guess they're just doing a march, the Pokemon march, which increases your likelihood of encountering wild Pokemon. Now then, I'm not gonna lie, I have not come, I've not thought up of nicknames for everyone in this team as of yet. I do have a nickname for Flareon though, and it is a very stupid one. I couldn't really think of much better for this, so we're just gonna go ahead with. Floofin. <laughs> it's it's a very dumb name. I'm not entirely sure. I don't even have any sort of inspiration behind the name. It's just a very stupid sounding name and it looks all floofy and whatnot. So there you go. There's Floofin. And then for the other one, we have for Fan P. Uh, hurry up. We are going to call this thing Cerny. The reason we're calling this Sioni is because it is referencing an episode of Bro Town, which I think when it was first announced was supposed to be. It, it, I think it was like yep, I think it was like tagged like the New Zealand version of South Park or something. And in one of the episodes, a character by the name of Sioni was saving up to buy a bike, and the little piggy bank that he had was in the shape of an elephant, and so that's where the uh, name for this comes from, which is. Yeah, it's kind of random. The only other name I had for it was Ned, which was the name of the elephant from that one episode of Timon and Pumbaa, where for some reason Pumbaa just wanted to become an elephant. I think Timon sort of pushed him into it, but whatever. So, basically that entire episode of Bro Town was just like, his mother developed a gambling addiction and she stole the money and blew it all on gambling and whatnot and so he couldn't actually buy his bike and so his brother who was in jail just decided to give him the key to his. I don't know. It was, it was very stupid. As 
was the nature, of course, so... Um, anyways, I probably should have prepared ahead of time before going into this because I kind of don't really have a nickname for Tentacle or Dratini. But we're going to wing it, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the segment here and come back once I have come up with nicknames for these two Pokemon. <laughs> Alright, I think I've racked my brain enough. These probably aren't going to be the best names for these two, but whatever. I'm going to go ahead and deal with it. Uh, so for Tentacool, we're going to go ahead and call it Jelly Cup. <laughs> it's very stupid, but for some reason, in... I think it was Alpha Sapphire, I just randomly came across a... I, I was trying to empty some stuff out of my Alpha Sapphire game so I could reset it, and I found that there was just a random tentacle in there named Jelly Cup. So whatever, I'm just going to go ahead and recycle the name, and hopefully it will stick and be dumb and hilarious and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> and lastly, we have Dratini. Which, this one actually does kind of fit it to a certain degree. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call it... Kaiser. The reason we're going to call it Kaiser is because... It, Dragon Knight's Japanese name is Kaidu. And the yellow... I, I wanted to try to think of like a yellow dragon to like name it after. The best thing I could come up with was like Ra, but that's more of a mechanical sort of dragon thing and I didn't really want to just name it Ra because it's a very stupid name. I probably just could have put an A-H on the end and made it sound even stupider, but... Uh, that's when I thought of the Kaiser Dragon, which is like a fusion monster, but I remember using it a lot in Duelist of the Roses and it was a yellow dragon, so... I figured with that plus its Japanese name, it would sort of fit well. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I can get the squirt bottle right now. Uh, it would be nice if I could, yeah, do this and actually talk to the person here. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Good thing I actually thought of that because I having to backtrack and whatnot would be very annoying because then that just means more stuff to cut out. But I don't think I'll be reaching the... Oh, I might actually be reaching the... Pseudo Widow, so who knows? Oh, look, double battle. Well, we don't need any of our either of our evolutions here, so I think we'll go Kaiser. Yeah, we'll go Kaiser and Jelly Cup. Kaiser and Jelly Cup. I don't know for some reason that's got it. That, that has a very interesting ring to it. All right, for the bulk of this segment, we're going to get a bunch of battles, even though. I'm already 10 minutes into this recording, but I'm probably going to end up lo losing about 3 minutes of that because of cutting shit out. So, never mind. Instead, we have got some flying types. It would be nice to have some electric types to deal with this, but it's fine because I've got both Dragon Rage as well as something that's super effective against the Skip Loom. So I think we'll just deal with it like that. Also, I just caught a sort of forgot that that's a area of effect attack. Area of effect, is that even... Whatever, hits both enemies, that's the point. And after all that, the Hoot Hoot still tanked. That's starting to tell me how useless Dragon Rage is becoming. I'm not getting rid of it though, at least not for right now, because it's still decent, but... Twister Acid combo here should put both of these on their asses. Alright, that's enough. Stupid sleep powder, whatever. And Combuskin, right. And an Octal. Ugh. Well, I'm gonna hit that thing with a Dragon Rage, but I need to wake Jelly Cup back up, and I can't do that. That's annoying because I kind of have a water move to take care of that Combuskin, but I'll have to switch out instead. Yeah, I don't want to go Sione because I don't think Rollout's going to do that much. Actually, wait, no, does Fighting Resist Rock? Eh, whatever. I'm going to go into Floofin anyway. Even though it's far above the rest of the team in regards to levels, I'm just going to go with Floofin. This uproar business is starting to piss me off just a little bit. Come on. Okay, well, at least I can two-shot it. I 
Of course, gang up on the one Pokemon. I hate it when they just decide to gang up on the one Pokemon. I guess in the fact, I guess in regard, wait, no. Okay, I thought that, I thought that Uproar was, uh, I thought that Uproar hit both targets, both opponents' Pokemon. Apparently that's not the case. So yeah, yeah, they actually ganged up on Kaiser. Ass hats. All right, fine. We'll bring Cerny out. Just start picking on that Noctowl while I kick this Combuskin's ass. Except no, I do not want that, that to happen. I'm gonna aim for the Combuskin while the Floofin kicks the Noctowl's ass. Swear to God, if you tank this. Okay, that was a critical. I'm I'm not counting that. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I'm not gonna count that. I have the feeling that it would have tanked it had it not been for that crit. But whatever. Uh, yeah, I can actually set it up with tail whips and then use the rollout to kick its ass. That's an interesting combo right there, actually. And of course, I'm like, okay, that'll work fine. No, no, you're gonna get burned and then you're gonna miss with rollout. Fuck you too, game. All right, out you go. Jelly cup, whatever. I, I, I just stopped giving a shit because I would, I, I'm very pissed off at that. That would have sounded like a really awesome combo, and then the game just had to fuck me over out of it. Jesus, that was a, that was a fucking powerful quick attack. I know it's minus one defense, but a quick attack has done a bit more than it should probably have done. If I can find some kind of move that can give this thing a boost in its attack, then Quick Attack might not be a terrible idea just because of priority. That would have been really awesome. Guess I can't complain too much. Lady Kim, okay. She'd probably give me a nice, decent cash stack, actually. Yeah, that's not too bad. Because how many Pokeballs do I have left? I have seven. Yeah, for God's sakes, glitch. All right, whatever. All right. Since I don't have much else to talk about, I might as well, once we get back into the battles here, go on with about my Pokemon playthrough of the day. So if you will give me a moment to bring this up. Stupid thing up. Okay, cool. This is one of the ones I actually wanted to talk about for quite a while. This is actually my playthrough of Blaze Black. And this is a hell of a playthrough, I have to I have to say. I picked it up just shortly after Heart Gold. I think I picked it up within about a week of finding the Shiny Tangler. And I had been like I'd known that it I, I'd known about it for a while. Um, but again, I was still in the process of I've got I've got an R4 now, I can do stuff, and it's all sort of new to me and whatnot. And so when I finally realized, oh, hey, I can actually play this now, I jumped at the first opportunity that I realized that I had. Not necessarily the first opportunity I had, but the first one I realized I had. And so I went through it. Um, that playthrough is now complete. I defeated the second round Elite Four. I have all 649 Pokemon in it. It's the only playthrough where I used a full team of 12. And overall, I would say all 12 of them have been pretty damn useful. I'll go through the teams now. My starter of choice was a Snivy. Uh, reasoning behind this is because each of the starters have a uh, hidden ability. That hidden ability was reprogrammed to be just another regular ability that they could get if you, for example, encountered one in the wild or just picked it as your starter. And so the Snivy that I got had said quote unquote hidden ability which was contrary for those who don't know what contrary does if the if the pokemon that has it is hit by anything that does status that status change is reversed like if something used tail whip on it normally tail whip drops its defense contrary makes it an increase in defense so it actually comes back to hurt the opponent which is pretty damn nice 
It also works on any self-inflicted um, status condition. So if you use something like Coil, which I believe is plus accuracy, attack, and speed, it actually drops them all. So Coil is a terrible idea on a contrary sniping. That's, there's a bit of a pro tip for you. What is broken, though, is Leaf Storm. Leaf Storm, in case there's anybody who doesn't know, is a base 140 power 90 accuracy move that reduces the user's special attack by two stages when it's used. So with Contrary, you're hitting them with a very hard stab move and then gaining plus two special attack on it. Which is very, very stupid. And that's just, like, that's just the stuff that it can get legitimately. For the ROM hack, Serperia had the Dragon type added to it. It therefore had access to Draco Meteor, which is the equivalent, to, which is the same thing as Leaf Storm, but for a Dragon type. And it can only be taught to Dragon type Pokemon, like literally anything that has the Dragon typing in it. And that includes if you give Arceus a Draco plate, or in Sun and Moon, if you gave Sil Valley the Dragon memory, it, it, you'd be able to teach it Draco Meteor. So it had access to both of those, and both of those would give it plus two special attack because of the contrary boost. So that thing was absolutely goddamn hair. I named it Aporia, and the reason I named it Aporia is because Superior has a rather regal design to it. It's very much Emperor-like, which reminds me of the Mechlord Emperors used by the character of Aporia in Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. So... There's the reason for that, and that's just the first Pokemon. I've got 11 more to go. I also used a Houndoom, which I named Costa, after an old dog of mine that passed, I think, a few years before I got into the playthrough. Um, it was very, very powerful. I can't remember for the life of me what the uh, thingy mobs for them were, like the natures, but it was good. It had Nasty Plot, it had Flamethrower, Gart Pulse, it's basically just get stats up and then just start wrecking house. That's basically what its gimmick was for that one. So I was quite content with it. Um, for my obligatory water type, obligatory by my standards, I guess, I actually picked up the monkey, the uh, pan paw, and actually stuck with that. It was actually pretty damn good. I think I gave it low kick to give it some pretty nice type coverage. Um, and so I was quite happy with that, actually. Check a radar with you to Route 29. Why? Is she implying that Chick Rita can get a gold leaf there, or something? Because that would be nice, actually. Eh, I don't really care much about the shiny leaves. I'll try to keep that in memory, because if that actually does work out, then at least I can sort of show that mechanic off. But... I'm not going to complain too much about that for right now. It's nothing I can really do until I've gotten through and taken care of that pseudo widow. So, the semi paw I named Wet Top. Not a very original name, but again, it was a monkey. It wasn't very remarkable, but it did its job. I think that's the point. It did its job. I used a Toxicroak. I named it Jabba. I gave it the obligatory just poison and fighting moves. I think it had Night Slash as well, so it added a nice little bit of type coverage. I felt like I'm going to be repeating myself here because a lot of these Pokemon were just sort of built to have type coverage and just sort of do well. But I, I guess that's the trick of the trade. Um, I named it Jabba. Not necessarily after Jabba the Hutt and not necessarily after the guy called Jabba or whatever who played Davo Dinkum and Fat Pizza. It was a fighting type. Fighting, if you fight, you kind of jab. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't a very, wasn't a very original name. I um, will be very quick to admit that. So that was that. I was quite happy with the way that it put in work. I used a Pikachu. I did not evolve this Pikachu. I left it as a Pikachu because its stats were boosted for the hack, and with a Light Ball, it was more than capable of handling its own without needing to evolve into a Raichu. And so. Yeah, I used the Pikachu. I named it Mikachu because the first time I'd ever experienced Pokemon was with the Mount Moon episode. And when I first heard Pikachu's name, I thought that they were saying Mikachu. So I took that bit of just memory and decided to stick to it as a nickname. So there you go, Mikachu. I gave it Grass Knot 
which was pretty damn good against ground types that wanted to just sort of rise its shit. And I was pretty happy. It had a nice little speed boost, so it was actually pretty quick. And obviously I gave it a light ball, so it was pretty damn powerful. It was really, really good in that ROM hack. I would recommend using it. And if you want to use a Raichu, then by all means go ahead and evolve into Raichu. Just know that you do not have to, in the absolute slightest. You can just stick with it. Uh, you'll have also noticed, actually, yeah, Rare Candy picked it up from uh, Pick Up, so that's a nice little thing. Um, I also used a Beautifly. I think I caught it as is. Yeah, I think I caught it as is. Because you can find them on the second round of the game at, like, level 10. That's that's how steep the level progression was in Blaze Black and Vault White. The seventh gym leader had Pokemon in the mid in the mid 60s. That's how that's how steep it was. Thankfully, though, they could get away with having it be that steep because you could just find Ordinos literally everywhere, and they gave out shit tons of experience. So it worked out. So I used a Beautifly and then Fly to Buy. I think it had a stat boost. I think it was, I think it got a bit quicker for the hack, so it was able to do stuff that it normally wouldn't be able to just because of slowness. It was one of my sleep inducers on the team, so it did that pretty well. I think I had like Air Slash and Bug Buzz on it, and I think I gave it Giga Drain as well. So, it, again, nice little sense of type coverage there, so I was pretty happy with that. Uh, next, I used a Garchomp, which I named Jaws. I know it's not very original, because it is like a Land Shark thing. Couldn't think of anything better at the time, and I found a Gibble in the... That weird cave, like on Route 3 or something like that. Just that random cave where you just sort of go to save some kid's Pokemon from a t from Team Plasma or something like that. Just found a random Gibble in there. Caught it, decided to use it. It's a Garchomp. I don't think there's any real reason to expect anything else from a Garchomp. So, yeah, it was solid. It had, it had its Dragon Move, it had its Earthquake. It, it did shenanigans. I don't think there's much more I can say about it. Uh, I then used a Gallade. I was really wanting to use a Gallade for quite a while, and so I decided since Routes was obtainable pretty early on, I figured I might as well go for it. So I did, and it did not disappoint me. I evolved it into a Gallade. I named it Chopper, after Mark Chopper Reed. And it kicked ass. It had some it had the it had some pretty damn good type coverage. I think I gave it false swipe just to deal with like legendaries and stuff like that. I believe its other moves were Sacred Sword, which I don't believe it had access to at the time, normally. It had Psycho Cut, I think it was. I think that's the cutting psychic move. And it also had Night Slash. I think it had Night Slash. I believe it could also get Leaf Blade as well, which is pr a pretty nice move to have, but I don't think I gave it that, so that was a bit of a thing. I used an Excadrill. Its original name was Digby because it was a digger, and so I just thought Digby was kind of there. I decided at the end of the game that, of all pla of all times, that I didn't like that name on him anymore, so I renamed it to Grand Mole, named after Neospatian Grand Mole from Yu-Gi-Oh. It had access, it was my strength user, and I didn't have any problem with this because strength became a rock type move in this hack, so I was able to just Use that as a bit of extra type coverage. It had its obligatory steel move, it had its obligatory earthquake move. I think the only thing that sucks sucked about it was that I'm pretty sure it was brave natured. So it and because of that minus speed, it actually got outsped by Clay's Excadrill. And so in both mirror matches I had against it, I actually lost both mirror matches. So that's probably the one thing I never ended up getting to do was to knock Clay's Excadrill over with my own because his just outsped mine, which completely mitigated the fact that my attack was probably far superior to his. So that was unfortunate. I used a Star Raptor. I don't even know why I used a Star Raptor, but it was just sort of there. It's easily the best of the generic start of game birds, so I'm not going to complain too much about it. It was about as solid as you'd expect. I named it Starbeak, again, because I didn't really think of any other names for it. So... That's just a bit of a... <laughs> I mean, it had... I, I think I gave it Steel Wing for the t obvious type coverage. Not that it really needed it, because it got close combat. Um, it was my Fly user as well, so it 
kept itself on the team a bit more often than most other of my team members, since obviously I had to switch around between 12 of them. And so it did what any Star Raptor did and just existed and was decent and good and stuff like that. So there you go. Uh, last uh, two more to go, actually. Uh, I used a Frost Last. Now, this Frost Last actually replaced a Dust Noir that I was using. And I dumped the Dust Noir because I didn't like its move set. It wasn't very, it wasn't powerful enough, in my honest opinion. If I had my time again, I would probably have stuck with the Dust Noir, but that just that didn't happen. Things took their course, and so it got itself dumped for a Frost Last. This is around about the time of the seventh gym. Uh, the Dust Noir was named Ghost Radio because it's it. I think it's like something to do with radio waves and some kind of Pokedex entry, and it's a ghost. The Frost Lass, I can't remember what its current name is now, because I, it, its original name was Amy, named after my best friend, but I wanted to recycle that name, so I got rid of it. I got rid of that name and gave it something else. I can't remember what that name is, though. I think it might have had something to do with the fact that it's like based off of a, ge of a, of a geisha. I can't remember how to pronounce that. If I pronounce it incorrectly, then I guess I just suck at life. But... Not that I already don't, but whatever. Um, so... Tra Thought Train, please, come back. Thank you, sort of. I think it's back, I don't, whatever the hell. I just went on a, yeah. Pfft. Okay, let's just gather our Thought Train here. What I can definitely say about this thing is that it was adamant nature. That's one of the other nature. That's one of the natures that I remember offhand for my team in this playthrough is that it was adamant nature, which was absolutely horrible for it because it was using stuff like ice beam and shadow ball to attack its enemies, which don't do anything if you've got fuck all special attack to work with. This thing still ate dragons for breakfast, and I cannot begin to tell you how awesome this thing was, despite the fact that its nature was completely ill-suited for it. So, if you want to use a Frost Lass, by all means go ahead. The shit's good. She good. She a good motherfucker. Last but not least, I used a Mushana. It was my other sleep inducer, although not quite as reliable as Flydivide because it was much slower, as it is inherent to being a Mushana. That and it had Hypnosis, which was a bit less accurate than Sleep Powder. This one I named Pillow because it looks like a very comfortable and fluffy pillow. That's about it. Hit. I, I, I gave it Psy Shock over Psy Kick. Just so that I had something, some kind of special attack to deal with stuff like Chansey. I don't think it did much to Chansey though, as far as I remember. I don't believe it did. No, it did not. At all. At all. There you go. <laughs> I don't know why I adopted some kind of weird accent for that, but I just did, so deal with it. Uh, I think this fellow does something. Also, there is a missing cut tree there, so I can actually get through, skip National Park, and go straight to the Pseudo Widow. And how much time has passed in this recording? 31 minutes. I'm pretty damn tempted to skip over National Park and wait until tomorrow, because by catching contests on tomorrow, and so I figured I don't, I don't really have any real reason not to show it off. That being said, minor spoilers, the bug catching contest is completely unchanged in this hack. So there's not really much in regards to originality there. So there you go. And most of the stuff that you find in bug catching contest has now been added to the regular encounter table in the national park anyway. So you can find Scyther and Pinsir and stuff like that there normally. So. No real reason to lose my shit over that one. I'm not. It's, it's 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 not like I'm missing. It's not like you're missing out on much. You just go around, catch something in a ball, see if you get first place. It's not even that useful until the post game because then you get access to all the other stones. But as it stands here, you would only get the sunstone, which I don't need considering this is considering what I've got on my team. So it's not really that different. So anyways, Floofin is channeling Molly the Sunflora from Bictoponobus' Fire Red Omega LP there, and landing lots of crits with Flame Wheel. Yeah, why the hell not? 
I don't know. Whatever. Okay, that's cool. What do you want? Okay, cool. At least we know now that she bloody touches herself at night at an overly manly man with the bulkiest of muscles. Not that I blame her. But anyways, here we have a tree. Mm hmm, that's okay. Cool, whatever. Mm hmm. Okay, we get it. Sweet, it's a female as well. I got the perfect name for that thing. I'm not going to use it, but I got the perfect name for it. So anyways, the only real difference with this pseudo wudo as opposed to the originals is that it's level 25 now. Aside from that, no real difference. It's just as difficult to catch as before. It's just as hard hitting as before. Wait, what? God damn it, pseudo wudo. That's annoying. That's actually really annoying because now I can't paralyze it. I'll throw it. I'll throw an acid at it. Hope I don't knock it out. I've only got seven walls left to work with, though. Ugh. Ugh. Now that's a dance game face if ever a bloody made one. The shitty part is acid drops physical defense, not special defense. So these def. Okay. Gen one logic. Okay, one logic, okay. Let's just move on. Um. I don't think I can damage it anymore without knocking it out. I could poison Fang, but then I run the risk of poisoning it. Shit. Okay, okay, okay. Throw a safe state. I've got seven balls here. I'm going to throw them all. If, the, if none of them work, then I'll just reload the safe state and try to work something else out. Congratulations. Well done. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think this segment is a great success because we first bought Pseudo Widow. Anyways. You're being called Bruce from the biology department. It works because Bruce from the biology department is a female. <laughs> Kid, I'm not even lying. To explain that to explain that reference, that is a reference to the Bruce's skit from Monty Python. And Bruce from the biology department is in fact a scantily clad female. As a matter of fact, everybody in that university from Woolamaloo, Australia, is named Bruce. So we just call them Bruce. We're going to call that one Bruce, because it sounds like spruce, which is a type of wood which you find on a tree, which that thing copies. So it's fucking perfect. If you ever want to use a pseudo in the future, name it Bruce. It fucking works. It works a treat. It really does. Foliage is also a good name to use, but Jish has already kind of claimed a patent on it just about. So... If you want a backup plan, go with Bruce. And so I'll end this segment by just finishing up the explanation of my team, uh, of my Blaze Black playthrough. The only thing I have to mention is the Shinies. Also, we can go back to Violet City here. Yeah, that's cool. I can go back and catch some of the stuff that I missed from here as well, so that's not too bad. So, last thing I have to talk about with that blaze bike playthrough of the shinies that I found. I found three of them. Uh, the first one was a Whimsicott in Lost Lawn Forest. Yeah, Lost Lawn Forest. Pinwheel Forest is the other one. The, the one that's earlier on in the game. Found that one in Lost Lawn Forest just sort of randomly came across it. I think it was about a week after I found the Tangler in Heart Gold. Uh, the next one I found was a bit less legitimate than the others. I know, I know, I, they really should just be either legit or not legit and nothing, no such thing as semi-legit. But to explain this second shiny, 
I have to explain that some of the legendaries can only be counted and counted in certain seasons. So I had to switch my clock on the DS two months ahead to a winter month in order to catch an Articuno in that grassy area outside the Dragon Spiral Tower. And when I was doing that, that's when I found the shiny. It was a shiny Emblem of Snow in a double battle with, I think, a Vanilish. So I had to catch that. I had to take care of the bloody Vanilish first, of course. But I managed to catch it, and it was great. And then the last one, while I was trying to find some more starters so I can finish the collection, I came across, look, surprise shock horror here, a shiny Ordino. I, I, I saw it coming from a country mile away because I killed that many of them to grind up experience over the course of the playthrough. So I kind of figured I'd run into one. And as fate would have it, I did. So there you go. That is the end of this segment. Next time we're going to have a look at the National Park. I might have a bit of a dabble in the Poke Outborn as well since that's now open. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. I'm probably going to get up to about Ecrotic City in that. So that shouldn't come as a surprise at all. So there you go. I will see you tomorrow.